right against the border with Bolivia, in the bullseye of South America, is the region known as the Pantanal. 65 kilometers from Brazil's Cuiaba airport, we drive along the Transpantanera Road, the only year-round road that penetrates the heart of the 50 million acres of the Pantanal, the world's largest freshwater wetland. This gravel and dirt road offers a huge quantity and variety of wildlife, such as these limpkins, rias, black caiman, the country's largest stork, the jabiru, with four young, a vine snake, Macquarie stork, zebu cattle, and snowy egret. After driving for three hours and up a very long private driveway, we reached the Pantanal Wildlife Centre. The Fazenda Santa Teresa was once a traditional cattle ranch. Today it is an eco-lodge on 3,500 hectares of flooded lands situated on the river Pichem. A large screened dining room, lounge and bar is a social centre of the lodge and specialises in caprinas, the national cocktail of Brazil. Outside, the land is very flat and dry at this time of year, and only a few metres from the river. Hammocks hang outside each room for siestas. A variety of small birds peck the ground under a tree in which a beautiful glittering emerald hummingbird perches. Nearby, a cocoa heron hunts in marshy ground for frogs. As the afternoon draws to a close, this family of Jabiru storks are flexing their wings and waiting for their father to return with food before the sun sets. Birdsong heralds a new day, and a belted kingfisher is an early visitor to the river. A capybara scouts ahead of his family, while the kingfisher is determined not to be beaten by the piranha he has caught. Ah, here come the family. Did he manage to swallow it? Obviously. Capybaras are the largest and heaviest living rodents. They form groupings, including male-female pairs, families with young and larger mixed herds dominated by one male. Their home range is marked with a scent. A kokoi heron takes off to cross the river. while a flock of cormorants head up to her. A roseate spoonbill. A tiger heron. Ringed kingfisher. 
to Jakarna. and Anagami Heron. A large caiman awaited our return to the fazenda and his snack. <laughs> and no, he is not tame. Oh. I have a Toto, Toto. Hmm? <laughs> a male jabberoo fishing for his family at the river's edge. Grey crested cachalotti, yellow billed cardinal, and lesser kiskidi. Black necked rufous hawk. Adult and young Rufus Tiger Heron in their nest. Crested Caracara. Grey-necked rail, a baby caiman, These inquisitive giant otters grow to 7 feet in length and weigh up to 80 pounds. As they bob up and down, they reveal white blotches on their throats, uniquely patterned for each individual, like fingerprints. Iguana, a colourful campo flicker, an unusual insect, and some kind of a bee. A view from a raised stand shows the mango trees and forest 
that Ben led me through on a very hot walk. During the day, the nocturnal potu perches upright on a tree branch, camouflaged to look like a stump. They hunt from a perch like a shrike or flycatcher and are sometimes called poor me ones after their haunting calls. The afternoon wears on. and we get another sighting of a giant otter about to climb up to his den and youngsters for the night. The capybaras head over the river for their night They are excellent swimmers, having their ears, eyes and nostrils on top of their head. A last look around this peaceful paradise before leaving to head back along the Transpantanera Road. And seeing these southern screamers and one with three chicks. Six feet in length, this yellowish-green anaconda was out of its usual environment, shallow water. Its eyes and nostrils are positioned towards the top of the head, enabling the snake to see and breathe while partially submerged. They hunt mainly after dark, lying in wait for mammals such as capybara and deer, and can even kill fully grown caiman by constricting their prey. I couldn't think of a better farewell to this wildlife paradise than the sighting of a non-venomous boa, the anaconda. Mm -hmm.